Well, the nine pound hammer, oh, it was too heavy. Heavy for my tie, heavy for my tie. Oh, warm, Bobby, don't you walk so slow. Lord, how can I walk when the wheels won't go? Dixon. Dixon Base. I'm not sure if Dixon's a company that makes that or if it's some company like maybe a branch from Fender or something. I don't know. But uh, I think you can see all the disgusting filth on it. Hopefully the camera will get that. It is really dirty. It's got a lot of DNA on that board. Not quite as much or as bad as the Epiphone had, but it's bad enough. And uh, all kind of complaints. The complaints are the electronics. Check this. Uh, check those pole pieces out. They fell down inside of the. I don't know what happened there. But uh, the complaints are the electronics, and you can hear why. You hear how noisy that is. And that, and that. I already checked both pickups, and they do, they do work. That sounds funny. So the pickups are good. They just uh, probably need cleaned up the all the electronics, the neck, uh, uh, the action, and playability is another another uh, complaint. I can see a huge amount of relief in that neck, way too much. So we're going to take the neck off of it to adjust that. The truss is down here, the adjustment on this end, and I don't know if I can get you a shot. I doubt if you can see it. Well, it's covered up. You, you got to take the neck off to adjust the truss rod. So, so anyways, let me uh, get the strings off of it and get the plate off, and we'll have a look inside. Oh, run! Not very much inside of the thing. See? It looks like I got to go get my glasses, but. It looks like there's never been anyone in here before. Until right now. My God, it's dirt filthy, man. There's the real color of it. But yeah, these little crappy pots. Uh, <clears throat> I want to see what's up with that pickup first. Why it's fell down inside itself. So hold on, let me put this camera up. Uh, yeah, the frets look good. Maybe a little bit of wear, but it's mostly filth. <laughs> Dirt. DNA. For the most part. Interesting. Maybe I can adjust that truss rod from here without taking the neck off. We'll see. Hold on, let me get rid of this camera and we'll uh, we'll look at that pickup first. So yeah, man. Back to business. Hopefully. Hopefully. Let's see what's going on inside of here. It's really messed up. I don't know if the whole pickup just I don't know, man. The pole pieces have slid down in, oh, uh, through the holes or something. Okay. Yeah, the pickup's fine. It's just fell. This is just a cover. That's all that is. <clears throat> the pickup just fell, I guess, away from the cover. It looks fine. Piece of rubber on the back of it. I guess that's what it is. Okay, let me pause the camera and I'll find that spring before I 
lose anything else and we'll uh, put the pickup back together clean it up a little bit so I tore it all apart these uh, the pickups snap up into these covers or mounts or whatever you want to call them so hopefully they'll stay in there now I snapped them up in place I'm going to try to screw them back in. Yeah, so uh, I need to find some electrical cleaner. Anyways, the way that works is the pickups themselves go, they snap up into these covers, okay? And uh, one of the ears was on both pickups was broke. Well, both of them on that pickup was broke. One of them on this one. So I just glued the ears back on, whatever they're called. And uh, it worked. Something to... Uh, keep the uh, electrical cleaner from going everywhere. What we'll do is uh, get the electronics working first, and then, then we'll set it up. Do the setup work to it. I hope. Yeah, I don't know if that's even in camera or not. You're probably not seeing anything, are you? Better. <laughs> dirty that one's loose even I'm trying to do this in a way that you can see what's going on I'm not having very good success Can't not believe that was that loose. I didn't even notice that when I took the knobs off. There we got contact. If anyone knows, <clears throat> I don't know. This is like I said. This is a Dixon base. It looks like a Fender. It, does, if anyone knows where Dixon's originality, or if they're a branch off a of fender or something like that, whatever. Okay. Filming. I got glasses here. I need to put them on. All right. Uh, back this camera off just a wee bit for you. Jack, I think. Jack needs cleaned as well. That jack is what's causing that humming, I think. And we got treble. Okay, both pickups work. That humming is pretty sure that's in that jack. I'm take the jack back out and clean it. And uh, I was able to get to the truss rod, by the way, five millimeter. There you go. And I tightened it about uh, 
Oh man, half a turn. The neck is straight right now. You probably can't. Whoops. Take a straight edge and lay on the strat uh, on the fretboard. I can see it's perfectly straight right now, and it's fairly tight. So I'm not going to tighten it anymore. There, that sounds better. Much better. Mo better. I took the hum out. I'm going to clean that a little bit better than that, but anyways. For right now, this thing is dirty, filthy, dirty, man. Good lord, it's filthy. Now check this. It's a 12. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it's a 12 inch radius all the way down. <clears throat> so we'll, uh, I'll probably just put all four strings on it, leave the screws out in case I gotta get back in there. I think it'd be easier to do it this way rather than take the neck off. I don't know. We'll see. This is my friend Earl. He stops in to see me now and then. Me and Earl's really good, but. Uh, or don't do that, man. Okay, so remember what it looked like before. I didn't buff it either, by the way. I just uh, put a lot of elbow grease into it. The frets are, they look much better now. Fretboard looks a lot better, too. It was just horrendous. But check this out, man. That thing cleaned up like a, I mean, look at that. Yeah, it's got some wear marks there. That's what the pick guard's for. Looks like someone's been using a flat pick on it. Well, I know a lot of bass players that do that, but... Anyways, it really cleaned up nice. I didn't buff it or anything. I just hand rubbed it all out. The back looks, you know, just as good as that. So I'm just going to tighten this. And I don't know if I said before or not, when I tightened this before, I just want to look down the neck here. Needs to go more. Uh, this neck popped and cracked, man. It made all kinds of noises when I tightened it before. So, you know, I don't know what we're going to get into with this. That, that's getting really tight. But, uh, you know, it's it needs to go back more. I mean, what are you going to do? That was probably... About a quarter of a turn right there just now. Now I already tightened it once. I went a half a turn the first time. Let it set 24 hours. Went another quarter of a turn. It set another 24 hours. So here we are now again. Just went another quarter. And I'm going to go a little more with it. As bad as I hate to. It's like I say, that thing was popping. Man, that wood, you know, that's it's a lot of movement at one time. There, we're getting some back bow in it now. And I'm going to let that set for a few minutes, and uh, I'll bring you back. Just let it settle for a minute. You don't want to go, you know, too awfully much at one time. You can break the neck doing this, and it is starting to get pretty tight, so hold on. I got it tuned up to pitch. The first thing we want to do before we can set the action, we got to get this radius right. So, I'm just going to use... This little tool right here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see. Yeah, I think maybe you can see that okay. I need to lower this fourth string and hold on to the tools. And once we have the radius right to match the neck, then we just count how many times we turn the screws to keep that radius. Boy, that one's way up there. Once we have this radius correct, uh, you know, to lower the action and keep the radius, then we just count how many times we turn it. Each screw. Turn them all the same. dead on the money there.
Perfect. All right, we're tuned to pitch. Got a capo on the first fret. I think you can see that. Yes, you can. Can you see back here? I almost see the saddles. Anyway, tune the pitch. Got a capo on the first fret. And uh, I'm going to do the 19th fret here. And we want to check 7, 8, and 9. You want to watch very carefully for that string to move up as I shove this under there, and it's not. I have a 15 here, and that's what the relief is, 15 thousandths. Let me do that on the 17th fret. Let's see what, yeah, still, it's exactly 15. It goes in there, uh, doesn't raise the string, but it's tight. I mean, it was well, not tight, but and that's 15 there. <clears throat> It's a perfect fit. Would really like to see this at twelve thousandths. But like I say, I don't know how long that neck has had that much relief in it. And we've turned that rod that truss a long ways, man. We really been jacking on that sucker. So I'm gonna give the guitar I'll tell the guy if he wants to bring it back in a month or so, let it settle down for at least a month. Because man, we God, I must have turned that truss rod a turn and a half total. You know, that's a lot. That is a bunch. Now, I want to hold this thing like where the strap would would hold it. In playing position, 12th fret. And it is ungodly high. 8 64ths on the bass string at the 12th fret. Man. And four, five, six, seven sixty fourths on the G string at the twelfth fret. That's got to come way down. So let's just start by exactly what I told you before. We're going to come back here and turn each one screw. I'm going to loosen each one of these one complete turn, and just see where that puts us at. Of course, I'll have to retune the guitar again. Well, this is pretty cool. I turned each screw one turn back here on the saddles. One complete turn on each screw, and it brought it down exactly 1 64th. So that's kind of cool the way that works out. I wonder if they measured those threads to make that work that way. So we're at 7 64ths on the base side here now. Four, five, six, seven, sixty-fourths, and six sixty-fourths. I want to go a little bit lower than that, so we got to do it again. I'm just going to do the same thing I did before, and go one turn with every screw. I'll bring you back once we've done that. Well, hopefully I'm set up here where you can see what's going on. I don't know, man. I'm in a really funky bind here, but trying to get it where you can see it. The G string is in tune. Harmonic at the 12th fret. Is good. Note the 12th fret. And it's a tiny bit sharp. I'm hitting that string pretty hard too, but still, it's it's a little bit sharp. See it rolling forward. There. The oak, the harmonic so it's a little bit sharp on the 12th fret there you can see it rolling forward that means we got to move this we got to make the distance from the 12th fret to the saddle a little bit longer 
tuned at that same pitch and making it longer will lower that note. So hold on, I'll do that. I won't put you through the punishment of watching me turn this screw. Get him. House and never sleep, folks. Just woke up. Controls. Check that out. We got the, the treble. I'm just playing through a little rolling micro cube amp. It's not even for a bass. And you're not going to get good sound out of that amp with a bass, especially. Checked everything off camera again, by the way. Checked the uh, neck relief and the action, everything, and it stayed the same. We still have our arch, our radius is still 12. Checked all that. All the frets work. I could get the action a little lower than that, but like I say, I would like to wait because these two are almost bottomed out, these two saddles. And we need to get lesser neck relief, less than 15,000. That's what it is right now. And then I can lower these uh, lower, or may not even have to, because that would bring the action down just by lesser neck relief. I need to practice my bass, obviously. But there she is, folks, uh, set up really well. We'll take one last look at it before she goes bye-bye. Uh, really cleaned up. i got fingerprints all over the thing right now. But you can see it really polished up good. Put a lot of elbow grease into the old girl. There's fingerprints again. I'll, I'll wipe it all off good again, though. Polish it so with thanks, me. guys, for staying with me through all this. And... Uh, Hope maybe someone picks something up that they could use a little bit, maybe on your own instruments. Save you a buck or two, whatever, you know. It's always good to save a buck or two. I appreciate it. Many thanks to all the subscribers. You guys are great, man. And uh, catch you on the next one. Cheers. And me and Earl's really good, but Earl, don't do that, man.